Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. When I made the BCG shortlist, I mean, I, I was surely really happy because it is difficult to, you know, even make the resume shortlist as well. Um, so yeah, so when that happened, I was happy about that. Okay, the first step has been cleared, and uh, that's where. And then I was anxious about it. That okay, now now I really need to, you know, get my case prep mode on. <laughs> My name is Simran Alawalo. Uh, I am from Delhi. Uh, I have done a bachelor's in business studies with major in finance from Shahid Sukhdev College of Business Studies, DU. And post that, I worked with BlackRock for three years. Here I'm at I'm in Door pursuing my MBA. I, I thought that it makes sense to get some industry exposure before coming to B school. So, like, if I give you an example, especially for um, say subjects like OB and HR, which all the other students think that you know they're all up in the air and they don't mean anything, but they they do mean a lot to me. Like that were the aspects that I struggled in my job, and that's why you know whenever the prof professors are saying something, I am able to think you know the next step that okay you know this happened at my job, this is what I could have done better, and even other aspects as well because in in my finance subjects per se, because I've actually worked on such projects, so I'm able to ask better questions, I'm able to understand it more theoretically because I, you know I did it practically, I'm able to understand it more theoretically. So it's a whole new balanced approach to it. Um, so that's why I thought it's better to get some industry experience before coming for an MBA. Before the summer placement week, I was sure that I wanted to go for consulting, and that's how I was prepping all the way through. Um, I was working through the case booklets and all. Why I wanted to go into consulting? Um, there are uh, you know many reasons for it. The first being that it's it's one of the front end jobs. You're there at the client location. You are interacting with the client throughout, and that develops a different skill set altogether. And secondly, there is never a monotonous day. You know you get to work on so many different projects, and essentially the skill set that you're developing is problem solving, and that's replicable across to so many industries. So, um, in the age of AI, you know, when we're looking at jobs, you know, getting, you know, probably getting over, you know, and a lot of things, this is a skill set that will probably, you know, that, that will probably stay longer than the other skill sets. So, I, I really thought a lot about it, you know, during my previous work ex, that what I want to do, how, what sort of skill sets am I developing, and that's when I zeroed in on consulting. It was zero in on consulting. I, I talked to a lot of alumni, you know, the my seniors, you know, from my, from my undergrad who are working in consulting firms. I talked to them to understand their experiences. Even even you know the seniors here who interned, you know what sort of projects did they have and what sort of future did they have. Uh, essentially, it was more important to talk to people who are further up in the industry, right? Because you know how they have seen their you know culture, or how they how they've seen their you know jobs evolve. Um, so to a couple of senior members, you know I tried to figure out that okay, how you know they've seen their journey evolve, if they think that they could have done better. So I have this habit of you know really asking people, you know, the, why did you choose this? If you choose, you know, if you did that. So in, even in the black rock, I used to do that. You know, I, I used to ask all the senior members that how did your career evolve. And for a lot of people, they don't really have a lot of reasons because it just happened the way it happened, right? But uh, but I just try to do, draw lessons from it. So for consulting, even that's how I went about it. And I read in terms of um, you know general knowledge per se that what are these consulting firms doing, what sort of projects are they doing, whether I'm interested in those projects or not. Um, so that's sort of, that sort of reading I did. And the perks that come with consulting, you know, going in tank swanky cars or hobnobbing with senior folks, I did knew a part of it, but essentially, you know, not you know to the extent that it actually is. I did experience some of it during my internship. Um, to say that if that factored in, uh, you know, while deciding for consulting, um, you know, a gro good growth did factor in. Like, you know, you get a, you know, you get a steady growth, and not even a steady growth, you get a quick growth, you know, in your career. And hobnobbing with these senior officials, uh, you know, helps you to get that sort of exposure, you know, that sort of early, you know, kick in your career that did uh, that actually did factor in my decision I think very simply if I would say that what a consultant actually does is to solve problems um, because you can be given absolutely any problem whatsoever under the sun and you have to solve you know problem in the best way possible and how do you go about doing it without having any subject matter expertise because that's the entire model of you know a consulting firm that without subject matter expertise you can solve a problem it's about asking the right questions and you know getting the work done uh, so you have to figure out that how you're solving a problem you have to figure out a structure through it and then you know how you go about actually you know go doing it and these days even consulting firms they're not they're not all strategy projects they're very implementation projects as well uh, so again like you cannot have one secret sauce to this but the one core thing is to solve problems
a consultant's typical day, I would say, actually differs from project to project. So I wouldn't say that you know it's same across you know different people. Um, but essentially, it would involve around you know whatever module that you're working in. So these they work in case team formats. In case team format, you know there will be there will be an associate, there will be a senior associate, a consultant, a project leader. Essentially, the number varying depending on the demands of the project. And everybody will have their own module that they're running with. So your module is your focus. How do you go about solving that that part of the equation? Right. So during a typical day, that person will figure out, you know, on his module, you know, will probably have a couple of client meetings, will make a couple of presentations. You know, if there are some Excel models that he want, he has he's been working on, that's what he'll do. But all of this will be guided by the module that he's working on. So generally, uh, BCG process involves a resume shortlist. I post the resume shortlist. Uh, we have a telephonic interview, uh, wherein which it's again a case-based interview. Um, so we are all of us. The shortlist candidates are provided buddies from uh, you know the firm, which is an essential part of it. That's why I want to highlight it. And they help us to prepare you know for these interviews. So after that, you know we have the uh, telephonic interview, which is an elimination round. And then we have the interviews at their office, at their Mumbai office. And usually everybody has like two or three rounds of case interviews. But all of their interviews are focused on case format only. There are just a couple of HR questions, but that's not the main focus of the process. So for my BCG process, I mean, first thing was for me to prepare a good resume. Right, so I had to get all the things in place. Uh, you know, I had the basic resume prepared because I'd worked and even applied before. Uh, but it's very important to get it in the right format. It's very important to convey what you want to convey in the correct way. Like there is one RAC way to go about things. That you first write the result, the impact that you created. You know, then the action that led to that impact, and then you give the context. And that makes a lot of sense for the firms who are selecting you because they really want to focus that what did you actually do. And secondly, it's more important to quantify things because qualitatively, you know, you can write a lot of things. But to, to be able to quantify, I think that's difficult. So even right now, you know, when I am checking resumes of juniors because we have this resume, you know, mentorship format and everything, everybody really struggles with figuring out the impact. And I'm always like, you worked on it. You should know that what impact did that, did that create. So even if you were one cog in the entire wheel of your work X, that leads to a bigger aspect of it. That leads to bigger return. So you need to understand, you know, what did that actually lead to, and you need to figure that out and write it accordingly, so that the firm is able to understand. Firstly, you know, it conveys two things. That you worked and second that you will be able to even present it well if you're not able to present your own resume well then how will you go about presenting you know the firm's projects well so it does speak you know to a lot of extent that that's what i really worked on that you know how do i get my points across correctly and uh, so for consulting they look for balanced resumes uh, you know some sort of extra curriculars um, you know good ads and all of that so that's what i try to you know figure out that okay which things should do i put in which things do i take out and uh, you know figuring that out so after my resume preparation, uh, you know, when the shortlist came in, then the focus was entirely on case preps. Initially, you know, even I had a little wrong idea about how to go about a case prep, especially guesstimates, because I get really daunted by them that, okay, like, how do I go about solving, you know, this random question? Okay, but uh, what a lot of people don't get it right, that it needs to be communication, that you need to, so what they're looking at it, that they've, they've given you a problem, okay, which might be, you know, it's, it might, which might be like a really huge unsolvable problem, but they, they're looking at for you to not lose your wits about it and that you can structure it. So a structure is extremely important so that you know they can see that you're not getting lucky about you know solving a problem. Right. So for me to it was more about getting uh, the getting right the fact that how do I go about solving problems? If I see anything, you know how how do I figure out that how am I how am I going to get to the final question? Right, so um, I prepared through uh, Victor Chang's books um, because he he gave some case you know formats, the frameworks and all. But he really focused on this approach that how do you develop a uh, develop a problem solving approach, and that's what even my buddy recommended me honestly. And uh, so that's that was you know one thing that I really focused on. And then all of his all of the shortlisted candidates like you know we organize ourselves in groups of two or three, and then we used to take each other's interviews, and that really really helped because you were able to even tell each other that you know you could have asked me that question. You can actually ask the interviewer whatever you. Want to ask you know it's not for you it's not a paper that you're given a problem and you just start drawing things and you know present it that's not how it's supposed to even go you're supposed to ask questions what they're looking at can you ask the right questions to get to the final answer right so even so through this you know we were able to figure that you could just have asked me this and you know you could have solved it right so we went through a lot of practice like that the senior who had made the people last year she took you know interviews uh, my buddy you know really spent a lot spent a lot of time with me my buddy was actually throughout you know through during the interview process even during the internship process so he helped me throughout you know to figure out my internship the telephonic interview that i had that was essentially a, a mergers and acquisitions case in an edtech firm 
I, I didn't know merger and acquisition case at all because okay, like you know who asked merger and acquisition case, but uh, again you know that was the focus that you can be asked a question from any industry, any problem whatsoever. So you cannot follow frameworks. Then you will fall flat. You will think that okay, now how do I think about it? You have to practice your thought process. Like how do you go about solving issues? So that was. Uh, you know during that um, i was supposed to suggest them that a firm wants to enter this industry they have these two target firms you just gave me two numbers of the revenues and profits okay then what parameters are going to look at right and uh, i went about you know all the entire uh, you know the financial models and stuff that okay we can look at this like all the financial aspects of it all the non financial aspects of it while you know the question, the answer was just right there so that's when the interviewer also wants to help you you know towards the end of it she sort of you know tried to get me back on track like all the other parameters i'd covered and she also wanted to see that how much i can think so sometimes what they do is they will keep on you know giving you their no no this is not it this is not it this is not it but that's probably because they just want to see that if you can think of other factors or not so towards the end you know what was the main thing she actually nudged me towards it she gave me you know factoid that okay you know this is this was a so and so price and then i was just oh okay you know you gave me this price that means that you know this has you know more number of customers and that's straight away the answer so you have to make sure that that's why you're engaged in the conversation it's just it's not a test for you to just do it by yourself you have to make sure that you're engaging with the person accordingly so after clearing that uh, we had to fl uh, fly to mumbai for the final round okay and that was very hectic in the sense that uh, you know when we came back from it I came back to my room at you know 12:30 in the night, and next day I had two exams. Like my end term was starting from the next day at 10 a.m. in the morning. I had a stats exam, so I was like initially I was like, what do I really you know how do I prioritize how do I focus and that's what term one is like for a lot of people. So therein uh, when we flew to Mumbai, uh, like most of us had either two or three rounds of interviews. Uh, my first round of interview was a sales uh, case. It was to increase sales of a firm at an airport, and that was a very uh, very engaging discussion uh, because we went about. or discussing a lot of things uh, you know he even uh, he even uh, drew you know say a location a format of how you know airport looks like okay this is a location this is one particular location this is one location where do you think that you would want to you know situate this particular store so that the sales can be maximized so we looked at that we looked at product mix we looked at a lot of problems right and the interview is actually going well and you know i could understand the vibe of the interviewer as well so even you know i even, i even made a quip in, in between and i didn't really mind it because that, that, that's the sort of person that he was Then my second interview came actually after the, after a couple of uh, you know probably I don't know two three hours and always was really, really jittery about it that you know who was getting the second interview or not uh, and that was a pricing case um, and uh, it was a difficult case because I honestly not even practiced a lot of pricing cases and actually what I went about is that he asked me that he everybody knows that you know the candidates outside discuss you know whatever cases that they've been given so he went about asking me that okay. you know have you have you actually talked about this case have you actually talked about this case have you talked actually talked about this case and i was so honest about that i said yes 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 and this is the case i knew that i would not know but i ended up saying yes to it and that's what the case that i was given so that interview we were trying to figure out the price of a a pair of eye drops um that will remove spectacles forever right so um so that was a that was a little, little difficult you know to figure out that you know how do how do we go about it what is the minimum you know of the alternatives that you currently have but you went to went about through a couple of calculations i did that interview actually did not go very well according to me so i was really hoping for you know to get a third call so that i can you know make up for it um i didn't get a third call so um the third call was with the partner um that was a case for an insurance firm um and that insurance firm was facing losing profitability in sri lanka so we had to figure out where the problem was so again like we did not have to solve the problem we had to figure out where the problem was so that uh, i was able to you know do that accordingly you know to the case format we figured out okay which geographies you know is it in different different distribution channels you know different product categories okay so there is the problem and then you go about segmenting it um so that's essentially uh, how the process went about for me even earlier you know whenever we were given uh, we, we were we were called to the placement office you know to um, you know either go through interviews or you know they wanted to give us some information we would just get a cryptic email saying report to the placement office at so and so time so it was always like okay is this about that is this about that is this about that and you never know right but at this point in time when i got that email that sort of convey that it might be about that only because i did not really have really other things you know very lined up for me that you know they will call me to the uh, call me to that place so we were actually all walking through and then we were just looking at okay which of the other person you know who is coming because i knew that who all people you know had applied for it so when i was in my room only and i was just walking through and it's all okay this person is also coming that person is also coming and then did you get that email did you get that email so it was clear that you know that's what the email is about and that moment was actually very exciting that finally 
ਕਰਿਓ ਕਿ ਦੀ ਐਫਰਟ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਮੇਡ ਐਟ ਪੇਡ ਐਂਡ ਨਾਓ ਇਨ ਆਰਡਰ ਟੂ ਪ੍ਰਿਪੇਅਰ ਫॉर ਮਾਈ ਐਕਚੁਅਲ ਇੰਟਰਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਟੋਕ ਟੋਕ ਟੂ ਦ ਲਾਸਟ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਦ ਇਅਰਸ ਇਨ ਟੋਰ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਹਾਊ ਡਿਡ ਸ਼ੀ ਗੋ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਪ੍ਰਿਪੇਅਰਿੰਗ ਇਟ ਆਈ ਯੂ ਕਪਲ ਆਫ ਪੀਪਲ ਫਰਮ ਦੀ ਫਰਮ ਐਂਡ ਗ੍ਰੈਡ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਹੂ ਵਰ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਕੰਸਲਟੈਂਟਸ देयर ਐਂਡ ਆਸਕ देम ਯੂ ਨੋ ਵਾਟ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਆਈ ਗੋ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਅਸੈਂਸ਼ਲੀ ਆਲ ਆਫ देम ਸੈਡ ਦੈਟ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਰੀਲੀ ਐਨੀਥਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਸਪੈਸੀਫਿਕ ਦੈਟ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਗੋ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਪ੍ਰਿਪੇਅਰਿੰਗ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਗੈਟ ਅ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਫਰਮ ਐਨੀ ਇੰਡਸਟਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਐਨੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਅਗੇਨ ਵਾਟਸ ਓਵਰ ਰਾਈਟ ਸੋ ਵਨ ਥਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਡਿਡ ਸੁਜੈਸਟ ਵਿਸ ਟੂ ਗੈਟ ਮਾਈ ਐਕਸਲ ਔਨ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ uh and uh, because i'd worked before and that work was a lot on excel so my excel skills were fine um the other thing that i was trying to do was to just read newspapers and be on top of things that in general i have some idea about some industry so you know whatever industry that i'm given i am able to you know just think at least a bit about that but again honestly that does not help at all because you can again be given absolutely any industry whatsoever so one thing that i was told by this person and that actually you know made sense was just you know to come in being mentally strong like you know get all of your other issues sorted and when you come in just give it your best